This video we're gonna talk about accessing the victim. So first thing we have to discuss is some terminology. So for tower style rescues, be it a cell tower, a water tower, a smokestack, a crane, whatever you have you, it's gonna be a bottom up style rescue versus a traditional fire rescue um, of a top down. So traditional classes, especially in rope ops, rope tech kind of, just, they teach a lot of um, the top down style. So a window washer or someone on scaffolding, something of that nature where they're on top of a building and they're setting up their anchor systems up top and then they're coming over and then down on top of them, okay? So these ones are bottom up style. So you actually have to access them from the bottom, bring everything with you, up with you on top of a structure and it's, it's, it's really more onus on one or two people going up, okay? So accessing on these types of structures, the majority of them are gonna have some sort of climb safe on them, okay? It doesn't have to be a cable like this one. The majority of them that we see again are cables. Um, but again, know what's in your districts, where you guys are responding to. So we like to have, uh, we have two of these in our rescue caster equipment on our squad for, our re for, for rescue purposes. Uh, a lot of cities will have uh, on their structures, they'll have cabinets that are on the structures for water towers especially, um, and for cell towers, they'll have like, little cabinets that have these cable grabs on there for, for workers in there, but don't count on that. Again, I'd prefer you guys have your own in your rescue cache of equipment. So again, ideally, if he, if he have this with him, he can then climb up with his ropes with him, and he'll access, access where the victim's at. One of the problems you're gonna see right away, looking up at this structure, is it has three legs. It's three legs and has one that has a climb safe on it. So if you have a victim that's up there working on any of those antennas on the other two legs, how are you gonna access that victim is the issue, right? So on this structure, and a lot of cell, cell towers like this, is self-support ones, they'll have a horizontal climb somewhere on it. This one has one has one up there around 100 feet. But even, even that said, you still have to have something to maintain your points of contact going across horizontally and then trying to access the victim wherever they're at on those other two legs. So you can't count on just having that cable climb as you go up. All right, so now we're on one of the other two legs of the structure it does not have the uh, cable safety on it to climb up on it. So we're gonna go over very briefly as an awareness level of climbing with lanyards and work positioning. Uh, during class, we go over this much more in depth. We also have an OSHA class that we run for fall protection. Um, and we can also give you recommendations on gear to use for this specifically, okay? But again, it's a quick overview. So climbing up there, one of the things you're gonna need is when you're climbing is your hands and your feet are one point of connection. So we're always trying to maintain two points of connection throughout, okay? So hands and feet are one point of connection. We have to have something else while we're climbing. So um, what Dale has here is lanyards, six foot lanyards attached to his dorsal D-ring as he's climbing. Um, we would recommend is having six foot lanyards with a fall factor two shot pack and then an uh, ANSI rated gate on it. Again, contact us for more information on that. So as he's climbing up, he's taking each one and he's piggybacking them up. He's trying to maintain his point of connection to um, where he's at on his dorsal beam ring above him or at that point of connection as he climbs up, okay? As he climbs up, he's eventually he's going to find a spot where he wants to do work. So when he wants to do work, he's gonna take his hands off. In order to take his hands off, he has to put on something else, another point of connection. So he's putting on his work positioner. He has a work positioner that's going on to his stern, that's going on to his central D-ring, back to himself. So at that point, he had three points of connection. He had his hands and his feet that are one. He had his, he had his lanyards hooked up, which is two, and then he put his work positioner on, which is three. So at that point, he can now take his hands off and he still has his lanyards and he has his work positioner on. So he still has two points of connection on and he can start doing work rigging, dealing with the victim, whatever else he has to do. All right, another technique for our rescuers to access the victim is if our first rescuer going up, if he just ends, end carries the rope up with him um, and then anchors off up top, what that does is it provides a static line for the guys on the ground. If they have a device like an ASAP, we can toss our ASAP on and then we can just climb up after him instead of having to use lanyards to climb up. Now, if I did climb up there, even on this line, I would still want to bring lanyards with if I had them. I still want to bring my work positioner with. So I might have to traverse past the victim or the rescuer. I might have to traverse horizontally to get somewhere as well. So I still want to bring these with and my work positioner with. But what this does is this allows me to get up faster, more efficiently, and save a little energy as I go up to, to help out the, my other rescuers already up top.